the Hebrew Israelite wives and sisters. Um, I wanted to make this video to um, talk to the sisters to let them know that you can't just leave your husband. And if you have an idea in your mind that you want to. So I would like to go over some scriptures with you um, to help you better understand that um, there is a divine order. And I'm not just speaking just to speak. I'm speaking from experience. Um, and I would also like to thank the Most High for giving me the opportunity to make this video today. And um, I hope that you take this message to heart, meaning your mind, so that way you can think about what you're doing before you do it. Okay. So, um, the Most High gave us a divine order at 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And you may also want to get a dictionary um, while you're watching the video, so that way you can look up the words as I did. Um, okay, so the scripture says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahushua, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahushua is Yahweh. So when I read this, this scripture, I see the word would, and if you look up that word, it has two definitions. Which, show, which is a verb, and it shows action. So the word would means pass of will in various senses. And the second definition says expressing the conditional mood, indicating the consequences of an imagined event or of situation. <laughs> so it, it just helps to bring out that there are consequences for you not following the divine order, um, meaning that it can result in the losing of your life. And if you would um, just look up the word to get a better understanding of the meaning of the word. Don't just read it to read it. You have to understand it so it is sink into your mind so you will know the words that you're reading. Um... And like my husband says, some of us suffer from aphasia, so we don't understand. Um, so the, the consequences, again, of not following the divine order is basically death. That's what it comes down to, your demise. Um, okay, so um, at, um, I'll go over another scripture again. At Deuteronomy 11 and 27 says that a blessing, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord, your power, which I command you this day. So when you think about a, a blessing, that means that it's something that's given to you that is deserving. So if you obey the um, commandments, so it just shows you that you have to obey because the Most High told us that we have to obey. So if you do what He commands you to do, you will receive many blessings. And they are, first of all, they are many blessings. You will receive everlasting life and you also have a happy marriage. Now in today's society, they place the woman above the man. So it's like the woman is here and the husband is down here. And that's not in accord with the Most High. So you have to be in accord with your husband. And when you read Matthew 18 and 19, it says again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. So, um, when I read this scripture, I also get the understanding that as touching anything means thinking. 
as long as it's in accord with the Most High. And it says, and it, and then it says, it shall be done for them. But if you're not in agreement with your husband, the things you ask, it will, it'll fail. So, um, if you're not in accord, then it, it just, it doesn't work. You have to be on the same level, vibrational thinking as your husband. Okay, and the next scripture I would like to go over is Ephesians 5 and 22, which says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as also unto the Lord. I looked up the word submit, which means accept or yield to a superior force or to authority or will of another person so I thought to myself submit what does that really mean and it says that submission is voluntary meaning that you want to do it and it's kind of hard for the sisters to accept that but if you love your husband then you would you would do that. It's not like it will, oh you better do this and you better do that. It's voluntary for you to do that because you love him. And um, and the definition also says accept, meaning you have to accept the divine order that the Most High gave us. And submit also means yield. So when you yield, that means that you have to stop and think. Well, if I don't do this, then what's going to happen to me? Because anything can happen. You can go walk out the house and get hit by a car or anything. So you just have to be mindful that of the words that you read in. So if you are in the right spirit, you will receive and take this message to heart. Because, like I said again, that I'm speaking from experience. And, and at Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So when I read this, un this scripture, I get the understanding that seek ye first means you have to want to do right. So you seeking, meaning that you're looking to do right. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now we say to ourselves, what does these things shall be added unto you mean? So, wisdom shall be added unto you. Knowledge shall be added unto you. And understanding shall be added unto you. And when you have these things, you will be accepting to the divine order because you will have the wisdom to know the knowledge of the scripture and the understanding that the Most High wants you to have everlasting life by following His commandments. So sisters, if we read and study the Bible every day, so that way we can always remain in the right spirit. And if you have questions while you're reading the Bible, then you ask your husband to go over the scripture with you so you'll get an understanding of it. And again, at um, Proverbs 14 and 1, says, Every wise woman buildeth her house. So when we think about that, buildeth her house, a house can be very small, or you can have a mansion. Not, I'm not speaking on the physical level, like the house. I'm talking about small. If you want to have just small things in your marriage, then that's what you're going to build for. But if you want to have a mansion, then that means that you're going to strive to do what's right so that way you can have a lot of things. Happiness in your marriage, um, your children being in order, 
um, receiving blessings, things of that nature. So, um, and it also says that, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So when you think about your hands, um, if you didn't have hands, you couldn't do anything. So it's a blessing to have hands. That way, when you construct this house, <coughs> you are using your hands in a loving way. And this scripture helps me appreciate the word wise, which means having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So if you continue to study and pray to the Most High for understanding, you can build up your house. So if you have a disagreement with your spouse or something of that nature, don't get into confrontations. It says, Colossians 4 and 6, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Now when you see the word salt, it's a seasoning. So if you're using salt on food, for instance, you want it to taste better, so you want it to be better. And that's what you're striving and trying to do, make things better. And at the end of that scripture, it says that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So we should always say nice and encouraging things to our spouse um, to help build them up. And, okay, so now we're going to talk about developing the fruitage of the Spirit. Now, at Galatians 5, 22 through 26, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Yahawashah have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Meaning that if you're crucifying something that you're killing it or making it dead. So that's what you have to do with your flesh. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So let's look up, so let's look at the words in this scripture. The first word that we see here is fruit. So when you think about fruit, you think of something sweet and good. So let's go with the first word that we saw in that scripture, which is love. And um, at 1 John 5 and 3 says, For this is love, for this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And the second scripture is 2 John verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So if you love the Most High, you would obey him and love your husband. And it's not grievous to you, meaning that it's not a burden to you to do these things. You, it's, you should want to do these things to make your spouse happy and to have a happy home. So the next word we're going to see is joy, which means feeling of great pleasure and happiness, which I think that speaks pretty much for itself, because you want to please your husband and you also want to create happiness in your home. And the next word here is peace. Now peace had two definitions. One is freedom from disturbance, 
quiet and tranquility. And the second definition is freedom from or the cessation of war or violence. Now this definition both had the word freedom, the words freedom from there. That means you are free from that thing. So when you bring problems into your home, there is not peace. It does feel like war and violence because you're arguing all the time and it's just no peace. And peace is like relaxing, so you should be able to relax. And it says freedom from disturbance. So it's like you're not disturbing, you know, you have to be more so quiet because if you're arguing and fussing, you're not doing the things like you're supposed to do, cleaning up the house, cooking, things of that nature. It's just, and then your husband don't have peace because he's disturbed by the things that you're doing. Like, why is she not following the order? So we also have to know that it's just not proper to do these things. Okay, and at Ecclesiasticus 36 and 24 says that he that giveth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. See, the word rest means relax, so you have to be relaxing. So if you're not following the divine order, you can't relax. Because it's always, he's always at war with you. And when you think of the word pillar, it means something that's strong, that's holding everything up. So, and if you're thinking like him, then you're not going to do these things. You're going to be having the mindset that he has. Okay. Um, now, the next word is long suffering. Having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. So if you having patience, meaning that you can't just run off whenever there's a problem or issue. You have to be an adult, act like an adult, and sit down and have a conversation about What's going on? So that way you can get an understanding. And also, um, it also helps me to understand, too, that even though it says other people, it can mean you also is the one that's causing the trouble. Hmm. So you have to pray to the Most High to help guide you. And if you listen to your husband for his wisdom and understanding, then it will make you happy and you'll both be happy. And when it says that other people, just know that it could be your own self to be the one that's causing the trouble. Okay, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, 28. 29 through 30. It says, Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So you have to examine yourself and see where you can make improvements in yourself. So that way you are more acceptable to the reproof of your husband when you going off and not doing right. And it also says that you're eating and drinking damnation to yourself. So if you're doing that, Meaning that you're bringing death upon yourself. And when you're drunk in the this, this state of mind, even um, physical or mentally also, then you don't have any understanding because of the, in the physical is the alcohol. 
in the mental is not understanding. And the Lord's body is free from blemish. So you have to strive for that also, to be free from blemish. And the word gentleness is the next um, development of the fruit of the Spirit. It says, quality of being kind and careful. So kind is thoughtful and careful, meaning thinking about what you do. And kind is, it could be a gesture, a kind gesture to, to, um, towards your husband. Um, it could be giving him a massage. Um, just any thoughtful thing that's kind. And at um, Proverbs 15 and 1, says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So if your husband says something to you, um, it says a gentle answer turns away wrath. So if he says something to you and you snap at him or you say something disrespectful or just not seasoned with the salt, meaning not you don't you're not saying anything good then that's going to make him be wrathful and it'll stir up anger in him so you shouldn't do that okay the next word is goodness meaning being good don't have a goodness in you and the next word is faith complete trust or confidence in someone or something so you have to develop complete trust in the Most High and your spouse to know that he's not going to do anything to hurt you or do anything behind your back that you don't know about, things like that. So you just have to develop that complete trust in the Most High to know that he's not going to do that. And you also have to have faith in yourself to know, and if you pray, that the Most High will help you develop this, the fruitage of the Spirit. So that way you will become this way. And the next word is meekness. The fact of condition of being meek, submissiveness. And condition means the state of something, when used as a verb, it shows action. So you have to show your submissiveness to the Most High and be submissive to your husband. And the last word here that we're going to go over is temperance, meaning moderation or self-restraint. So that means you have to have self-restraint of yourself and the things that you say and the things that you do. So you have to learn to control yourself and what you say. So if so we have to live and walk in the spirit and be desire and be desirous of vain glory. That's the other part of the scripture, which means not having pride in oneself. Because if you're very prideful, that means that you're not acceptable of someone telling you, well, don't do this or don't do that. You have too much pride, so you're going to not receive it. So, or if you act like you're too good to be told what to do. And provoking one another, which is in the scripture also, Meaning not doing things to stir up annoyance or irritation. Okay. So in closing, I would like to say to the sisters, take time out to examine yourself and see where you can make improvements in yourself. So that way you can become a better person and also, your husband will love you for it. So we all need encouragement to stay strong in the spirit. So I hope you like the video. Again, 
I'm trying to reach your heart, meaning your mind, so that you may have a happy marriage. And it says that Ephesians 11, I mean, excuse me, so I can, Ephesians 6, 11 through 18, put on the whole armor of your power, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that whole armor means protection with the scriptures. So pray to the Most High every day for a strong marriage, and you will be happy for it. Shalom.